In a recent release of Home Assistant, the Webhook integration got a much needed update to make your smart home more secure and allow you more options when using webhooks. So let's talk about what these changes mean for your webhook based automations so that you can continue automating the boring stuff. One of the things that makes Home Assistant awesome is there's an integration for everything. Well, okay, maybe not everything, but for any service or product that has the ability to use a webhook to send or receive data, the webhook integration inside of Home Assistant can allow you to integrate that product or service with your smart home. So let's talk about the changes to webhooks that came in the 2023.5 release. So in the 2023.5 release, webhooks became more customizable. Before, by default, you had no ability to choose which methods were used to access your webhooks. And by default, it was only post and put. But now we also have the ability to use get as a method for accessing our webhook. But maybe more important is we now have the ability to limit webhooks to be just local only which if you have other services running on your network could be an easy way to integrate them without exposing your smart home to outside risk. These changes give us more options when using webhooks and more importantly, will make our webhooks more secure. So let's focus on how these changes impact using webhooks in our automations. If you're adding a webhook as a trigger to an automation after the 2023.5 release, there's some things you need to keep an eye on. If we we're gonna create a new automation here, we hit add trigger, say webhook. Here it gives us this webhook ID. You can notice by default, only accessible from the local network is checked. So if you're adding a new webhook to a automation after the 2023.5 release, and it needs to be accessible from outside of your local network, you're going to need to make sure that you come in here to this gear and uncheck that option. Otherwise, your webhook isn't gonna work outside of your local network. If you're wondering how to leverage webhooks for the different use cases webhooks are good for, I left a couple of links in the description of this video to previous videos I did walking you through how to set up webhook-based automations. They are useful. I mean webhooks, and maybe the videos too. So if you want to know more about webhooks, check those out. Now let's talk about how to update any automation built prior to the 2023.5 release that is using webhooks today. First off, despite all of this being called out in the breaking changes section of the 2023.5 release notes, these changes don't actually break your smart home as of today. The actual risk is that if you ignore these changes, your home assistant automations that leverage webhooks might break when the 2023.7 release comes out. You may have already fixed these because I'm a little late on this video, but if not, let's talk about what you need to do to ensure that your automations work after 2023.7. If you have an automation that is using webhooks today as a trigger, then you probably got some repairs listed under the repair panel. And they're gonna look like this. I've got two of them here. And when we click on it, it tells me that I need to make a choice about the security of this webhook before the 2023.7 release. And since these are currently stored in my automation.yaml file, I can just click this link to edit the automation. So what it's talking about is under the trigger, we now have a little gear icon next to our webhook ID. And we can just click this and get our options. And now by default, your methods are going to still be post and put. No changes were made. And by default, they check mark only accessible from the local network, which does make sense because you wouldn't want the home assistant team enabling outside access without you knowing. For now, if you need this webhook to be accessible from outside of your network, then you need to uncheck mark this box, which then pulls up a little save button and you can hit save. And that really and truly is all you need to do. If this webhook is one that is used on your local network, you can just leave that check marked by default. Although I still think you might want to come in here and uncheck it and then check it back and hit save just to make sure. And now you can see that our repair has disappeared and we can go ahead and do this one as well. Just come in here, Check the gear. In my case, these need to be accessible from outside the network. I'm gonna hit that, hit save, and we're done. After you've made those changes, you should be good. 
And really, that's all I wanted to cover in this one. Like I mentioned earlier, this isn't my first webhook video. So if you got this far and don't know what I'm talking about, or want to know more about webhooks and the different use cases, check out these videos right here, where I go into more depth about how to build a webhook-based automation. And now it's time for you to go automate the boring stuff. Mm -hmm.